of osmosis. First, the first uh, part we talked all about diffusion and that important part that diffusion plays in our overall health and our development. So what is a semi-permeable membrane? So before we understand what osmosis is, we need to understand some important things about cells. The cells in our body are surrounded by a wall-like structure called the cell membrane. And this membrane is, a, is very special because only water and very small molecules can pass through it. We use the word semi-permeable, which I was just talking about, to describe the ability of only letting certain things pass through the membrane. So like I was saying, think of it as like a sink stopper um, and only stopping certain things going down the drain. So osmosis is when water molecules travel from a place with low solute concentration to a place with high solute concentration. So to understand that better, we need to talk about solutes and solvents. A solute is a chemical that can be dissolved in a solvent. So think of like sugar. If you put sugar into water and you stir it around, that sugar is going to dissolve, right? Well, that's what a solute is. Okay. Chemicals can be, can chemicals that can do this are called soluble. So sugar is soluble. Same with salt. So, did you know that water is often called the universal solvent because so many things can dissolve in it? So what is concentration? So concentration, you may have heard of certain concentrated pro like products like laundry detergent or orange juice. Well, concentrated just refers to the amount of solute in the solution uh, compared to the amount of solvent in the solution. So solvent meaning water. So when there's a lot of solute compared to solvent, a solution is said to be concentrated. And when there's a small amount of solute compared to a solvent, then that solution is said to be diluted. So if you can think about it, you can think of it like, so here's a concentrated solution with a lot of minerals and water on the left, and then a diluted solution doesn't have as many minerals. So one way to simplify this is to think about it as um, pop compared to water. Water is very dark. It's kind of there's syrup in it. It's it's thicker. It's high. There's higher viscosity, um, and there's a lot more sugar involved in it. So highly concentrated, it would be uh, Coca-Cola or pop like that. Apple juice is kind of in the middle because there's still sugar in it. It's still it's between diluted and concentrated. And then you have clear water where there's very very little uh, s s uh, solutes in there. So here's again another spectrum of what concentration means and why that's important. So osmolarity refers to the total concentration of all solutes in the solution. So osmosis in our gastrointestinal system. So if you think about the impact, there is an impact as far as osmosis goes on our body. And this is one of those examples and it deals with food and drink. So when you eat food or drink water, it travels from your mouth down your esophagus into your stomach. And in the stomach, food is broken into tiny pieces that mixed that are mixed with the stomach liquids. This mush of food and stomach liquids is called chyme. The chyme travels into a small intestine and that's where the osmosis takes place. There are many other examples where osmosis is important to the human body, such as dialysis and our kidneys. But let me know if you're learning, if you're interested in learning more about that. I'm not gonna talk about that today in this video but uh, dialysis and, and our kidneys are very important with osmosis as well. So that chyme has a higher concentration of epithelial cells that line your intestines. So in order to reach homeostasis, meaning balance, water moves into these cells through their semi-permeable membranes, taking small nutrients along the way. So near the epithelial cells are capillaries. The water and nutrients move through the cells of the capillaries into the bloodstream. So very similar to diffusion, it deals, but it deals primarily more with the movement of water. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about osmosis and plant life and why osmosis is important to plant life because it allows for water uptake, photosynthesis, and general stability. Osmosis ensures that all cells and structures within a plant have correct water pressure and volume. In animals, however, Osmosis helps them to absorb water from the intestines to the blood. So it also, it, it's important to plants because it helps them to absorb important nutrients. So here's on the cellular level, osmosis and plant cells. So there are three different uh, states that cells, plant cells 
can reach. So there's the normal cell where there's a, it's, a, it's evenly distributed, it's holding the amount of water in the vacuole that you can hold in the normal cell. And then you have a normal turgid cell, which is when it's starting to swell up and fill up with water. So that's the central vacuole, the part of the cell, uh, of the inner space of, the, of a plant cell. And plant roots absorb water from the soil surrounding the plant and transport, and transport it to cells in the plant. So that water is stored in the vacuoles. When a cell needs water for cellular processes, water moves from the vacuole to the part of the cell where it's needed most. This causes a decrease in the concentration of water in the cell's cytoplasm. So if you look on the right side of this image, on this diagram, there's the cytoplasm and it shrinks from the cell wall. So it's kind of shrinking down. If the solute concentration inside the plant cell becomes higher than the solute concentration outside the plant wall, then water moves into the cell by osmosis. So that's the process. Think of it like breathing, right? The water goes in, it swells up. When the water needs to be dispersed at other spots of the plant, it goes through that semi-permeable cell wall. The water can go through and out when it needs to get uh, the important nutrients. Another way you can think of it is uh, think of sweat, okay? When your body is starting to exercise and, and work out, osmosis is what causes your body to sweat. What's happening is the water is going through your semi-permeable semi uh, skin cells and the water from your body goes through the skin and comes out to the surface. And that is all about osmosis in plants and animals. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please message me in the chat and I will tell you what the next assignment is for osmosis.